Okay, I just started. Uh, welcome all. If you can hear me, if you can hear me, my English is already terrible, the first sentence. If you can hear me, please tell me in the chat room. Say, I can hear you, Robin, to make sure everyone is listening. Anyway, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining tonight's live stream. Uh, if you don't know me, I think everyone who is here probably knows me. Uh, my name is Robin Shaw, and I am a Canadian teacher, and I am doing live streams uh, every night at the same time. Well, I'm going to try. Uh, my live streams will be at the same time every night, and every day will be different. Um, here is the, I'll move, uh, wrong way, I'll move this way. Here's the schedule every day. Uh, I'm, I'm in Korea now, but my live streams are for everyone around the world. And today is Tuesday, so I'm just doing English q and A. I I did one last night, I'm going to do one again today. And then tomorrow, I'm going to try some IELTS TOEFL test preparation. If you guys are interested in IELTS TOEFL, join tomorrow, Thursday, pronunciation, Friday, topic discussion, Saturday, we're going to try a game, uh, and then Sunday, another lesson. So right now, I'm testing to see what everyone likes, and then if, you, if people respond and they watch certain types of videos, I'll make more of those videos. So that's what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to just take a look in the chat room here. And tonight is uh, English Q&A. So if you have any English questions, I, I don't promise, but I will try my best to answer your questions. Now, I don't answer every question. Sometimes uh, students ask questions that take too much time to answer. And I'm very sorry, because I try to answer, uh, I'm gonna tell you, I try to answer every question uh, less than two minutes. If your question takes more than two minutes, I might tell you uh, sorry, okay? so. Uh, when you make questions, don't make them too easy, but don't make them too difficult. Try to get in the middle where it takes me two, maybe three minutes to give you a good answer. All right. So everyone should be thinking of questions right now. If you haven't already, if you don't, if you haven't already prepared any questions, you should think of questions. I'm just going to take a look in the chat. I see Stanley was first tonight. He came very early. Uh, Stanley came oh, like 90 minutes early. He's so eager to see my live streams. He's waiting in the room 90 minutes. Thank you, Stanley. You are the student of the day. Uh, Layla's here. Um, I think Layla is my number one super fan. Layla, uh, her name here is Lily Alili. Uh... Contact her if you want to join my fan club, because I think she's the president. Shihab Eldin, hi, you're waiting, I'm here. Grace, Carrie, Prakar, and Ra Raquel, Garabito from Dominic, Dominic Republic. Just Chilmar, you're here again. Anfal, uh, subtitle movie clips, that's Kevin, I believe. Fahim Khan, welcome. Wanderson Gomes, he's here. Arash, okay, Arash. Gilliam, Gilliam Hondemikon, hello, welcome. Tantan Nui, hello, sir. Please just call me Robin. And Wanderson, hello, Robin. Congratulations on your work. Hmm. Well, congratulations, thank you. I think today this channel... Uh, we passed 500 subscribers. 
so that's good. But unfortunately, uh, you know, we only have 15 people watching or 17 people watching now. I need 500 people to be watching. But I guess smaller groups are better. Step by step. Anyway, thank you guys for supporting this channel. We crossed 500 subscribers. I think today, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in getting free uh, English lessons every day, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications, like the videos, you know what to do. And you guys should be start typing your questions. Make sure you try to get your English questions clear, okay? Provide some example sentences so I know kind of what you're talking about and make sure you have a question mark so I can hear or I can see that it is a question. A question. Um, and sometimes I make mistakes, uh, if, especially if I'm uh, writing on the board, I make mistakes spelling. Just uh, tell me. You know, I'm going to make mistakes because I'm focusing on so many things. Sometimes my brain is cloudy sometimes. All right. So Anfel Ibrahim, he has the, the first question I see tonight. And he asks, what do you advise me or what do you advise me to improve the reading level of English? Now, most of you know, I'm always promoting reading, uh, reading every day, 20, 30 minutes reading English. And I know all of you hate to do that. You guys don't like reading. I know that. But the best way to improve your English fluency uh, is reading. Okay. Uh, that's very helpful. That's essential. Now, he's asking how to improve the reading level. So he might be starting, Anfil, I don't know your level, but let's say you're starting at low level and you want to get uh, up to a higher level. Well, uh, reading is a skill, like playing tennis. It, it's, it's a skill. So either you're, a, a, like for tennis, a bad tennis player or a good tennis player. If you're a bad tennis player, how do you become a good tennis player? Well, to improve your skill, you practice. And it's the same with English. Uh, to improve your reading skill, you have to practice. So, you have to read. And I tell my students, if you are serious, if you are serious about learning English, you read every day uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Now, I don't want you to read grammar books. I don't want you to read English textbooks. I want you to read for fun, something you enjoy reading, okay? So that could be a comic book or a novel, and make sure you read at your level. Everyone here, you, if you're serious about improving your English, you have to read. This is not my philosophy. This is most, every good teacher knows this. All right, I'm going to move on. I could talk about reading for five hours. And I'm, you guys would be bored of that really fast. All right, uh, Carrie Page, is grammar really important? Well, grammar is really important. Grammar is really important. But uh, how do you learn or acquire the grammar? Well, uh, to improve your grammar... Uh, my advice is to never study the grammar textbook. Uh, of course, if you're starting to learn a language, you need some grammar basics. But I think everyone here, you know the grammar basics uh, and you want to continue studying grammar. No. Read. Okay. Reading is the best way to learn grammar. Your brain is very smart, and the more you read, so we're talking quantity, the more your brain will start to recognize uh, grammar, uh, grammar forms, grammar structure. And you will uh, acquire 
the grammar. So grammar is important, but how you get the grammar, don't study it directly. Uh, you get it from reading or, you know, you, watching TV, other things. You have a panda official. How to recognize, he asks, he has no question marks. Yavie, remember to put the question mark. How to recognize word ending ing are adjectives. Uh, yeah, uh, so which words are you con are you confused about? Now ing, uh, yeah, can is often attached to some adjectives like uh, exciting, but uh, it's it's attached to verbs sometimes, you know, for a present conti continuous, like fishing. So how to recognize? Well, uh, I would say right, right away again, we go back to reading. <laughs> if you read more, you'll be able to recognize uh, what are verbs, what are adjectives, uh, things like that. Uh, for ing adjectives, there's not too many, so you could probably memorize them all. Uh, so, Yavi, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really know a quick and easy way other than you're just practicing looking at different words ending in ing and learning how to recognize them through exposure. We call it exposure or getting more... Uh, input. The more you look at, the more you can recognize the differences. And subtitled movie clips, Kevin, do you care about you, your American accent? Well, I do not have an American accent. I have, uh, I, I come from Canada, but I've been living outside of Canada for 20 years. So I probably have some Canadian accent, but I'm sure my accent is more of a neutral I don't know. I, I, I shouldn't be the one judging my accent. Maybe another native speaker should judge my accent. But I, I don't think it's a strong Canadian accent anymore. It's more of an international accent. So do I care? No. Do I care about my students having American or British accent? Uh, yeah, I do care. I think they don't need those accents. So pronunciation is important, but accents are not. So I don't care. Stephanie Paulus. Hello, Robin. Hello, Stephanie. Where are you from? All right. Grace. Grace, Grace, Grace. Yesterday, I saw the video you gave a link about Konglish. All right. So Grace is talking about Konglish. Grace is Korean. And Konglish means Korean and English words. So Esther, another teacher, said she's wearing nail polish. Can I use spread or put on? Uh, you put on nail polish. I th uh, the verb you the, the verb you want to use is put on. Uh, I don't think we use spread. No, I'm, I'm not a lady. I'm not a woman. I don't use nail polish, but I'm pretty sure we don't say spread. Uh, spread is usually if we have toast, we spread butter on the toast. But for nails, nail polish, we put on nail polish. So if Koreans use spread, uh, that's probably Konglish. Layla, in this since in this sentence, I'll show you the pattern after school. I have dif difficulty about meaning pattern and its pronunciation. Excuse me, can you explain it to me? Well, I don't understand what the sentence means. When you say I'll show you the pattern after school, I, I don't know what pattern means in that sentence okay i need more information where did you find that sentence what were they talking about in that that paragraph or something but i can help you right now with pronunciation it's uh, i will pronounce that pattern 
Of course, uh, other native speakers in different regions of the world will pronounce it a little differently, but I pronounce it pattern, pattern. And Grace again, she's obsessed with nail polish. Grace says to me, wear with nail polish. I wear nail polish. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is kind of awkward. In English, we use, because you wear clothing. I'm wearing clothing now. But we also wear nail polish. And I never thought about that, but that is weird. I agree. We to, For people to wear nail polish. Ratha Valley. Hi, Robin. I'm, I'm really happy that you make this club. It's a club. Community, community. I will stay with you all the time. I need your help, sir. Well, I thank you for staying with me all the time and you need my help. What do you need my help with? How can I help you? M.E. Hi, welcome. Do you have any questions, English questions? Again, anyone, if you're coming late, this is an English Q&A. If you have any English questions, feel free to ask me in the chat. If you can't type in the chat, you probably have to log in to your YouTube account to enter the chat and then ask a question and I will do my best to answer. And you should follow the chat to know whose questions I'm answering. Oh, so I'm about 10, almost 10 minutes behind. You guys must have asked a lot of questions. Abdi al -Kader. Please send a PDF English on WhatsApp group. Uh, what do you mean PDF English? I don't make any PDF files of English. I'm a video teacher. I, I don't make uh, written material. So I'm not the teacher to ask about PDF English. Uh, Wanderson, maybe other students can help you, Abdi al Qader in the group. Because I know a lot of students, they are sharing PDF files. Uh, I guess they shouldn't be sharing some, some books and stuff, but I know some students share that. Wanderson no, Gomes, Gomes. Until finally I can understand a native speaker because he speaks slowly. I don't speak. He speaks, excuse me. He speaks slowly and clearly. Uh, HS, HS, HS. What's HS, HS, HS? Well, thank you, Gomes. I, if you have a question, I, you know, I am a, a resource here to help you improve. I'm a tool. Use the tool, guys. Abdi al -Kader, I'm in your WhatsApp group. What's your name in the WhatsApp group? Hoon Kim, lovely to meet again. Yes, welcome back. Grace, if someone told me you are a pain in the real or rear, what does that mean? All right. I'm going to go to the board for Grace's question here. Can you see that? All right. So, uh, yeah, well, for emphasis, they will add real, but you don't need real. I'll just leave real out because there's not much room. Uh, can you guys see that cl clearly? You are a pain. So if someone is bothering you, someone is bothering you, and you don't like it, you can say to them, you are a pain in the... neck. So this is the expression to say to someone who is bothering you. Oh, you're a pain in the neck. Okay, this is the good way to use that expression. But we can also say you are a pain in the ass. Of course, the ass is behind you. And you can say to someone, 
you are a pain in the ass. Now, ass is a little bit of a bad word, not too bad. So if you don't like to say ass, you can say neck. Also, if you don't like to say ass, you can say uh, rear. And rear means the same as ass, kind of you're behind you. All right. So this is a common expression when someone is bothering you and you want to complain to them. You're a pain in the neck. You're a pain in the ass. You're a pain in the rear. And uh, you can also emphasize it. You're a, a real pain in the ass. Or you're a pain, you know, things like that. All right. So I hope that helps you, Grace. Stephanie's from Malaysia. I've been to Malaysia many times, Stephanie. I love Kuala Lumpur. And I've been to Kota Kitabalu in Malaysia. Which city are you from, Stephanie? Oh, Prakar is telling me the group name or the name in the group. Okay. Layla, so, okay, I'm catching up in time. I have a big problem when I want to participate WhatsApp group by the typing or send voice notes to respond. I need too long time, so I think in correct words and sentences, what do you rec recommend me? Okay, Layla, so I think you're complaining. It takes you a long time to send the voice notes. And like reading... Uh, speaking is a skill, and you got to just keep practicing. And I promise you, uh, Leila, if you practice every day, every day, you are going to get faster. You are, I promise you, you just keep doing it. Everyone here, uh, I think most of you don't realize when you are getting better because it's slow. You know, learning English is a very slow process. But if you are practicing every day, I promise you, you are getting better. So I always advise students, when you're studying English, you should record your voice every month. Once a month, just to choose a day, record your voice. And then each month you keep recording maybe the same sentences, read a paragraph, and then each month just say that paragraph again. You know, after six months, if you go back to the first recording, it is going to sound very different. After one year, you will be amazed. Okay, so you'll have 12 recordings and you can hear your progress. So practice. That's the answer. quick answer. Practice, practice. Yavier. Oh, he's asking about the schwa. The schwa is the common English sound in our in our when we're speaking. Uh, for the, if you're going into the schwa sound, you need to be uh, focusing more on the IPA, the International Phonetics Alphabet. Uh, when I'm checking schwa sound or other sounds in my words, I always use the Oxford Dictionary and I put in the word and then I check the IPA. Okay. Now, Yavier, uh, Thursday I'm doing pronunciation video. So at I think Thursday's video, I'm going to talk about the schwa. That's going to be the topic of Thursday's video because of questions like this. So, uh, quick answer, check the Oxford Dictionary for the IPA. And watch my Thursday pronunciation video. Stanley, how to pronounce these words? World. Girl. Pearl. So, I... Th uh, for the spelling, they all have the R and L. Okay, you said that it's hard to combine that sound, R and L. And I prefer British accent, TQ, thank you. Is that thank you? Sir, uh, I'm sorry I do not have a British accent. World, 
girl, I, I can't do the British accent, uh, world, girl, pearl, earl, earl. Okay, so again, the, with pronunciation, it's a physical, uh, physical skill, er, my tongue is, well, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but that would be a good question for Thursday, uh, the pronunciation lesson. Uh, just quickly repeat after me. Everyone, world, girl, pearl. Okay, I know it's hard. And a very difficult word, probably the most uh, difficult word is squirrel. That's a very difficult word for foreigners to pronounce. Squirrel. You know the animal? Squirrel. Vincenzo, hello. Welcome. Do you have any questions, Vincenzo? Grace, I do remember her sniffing me. Okay, Grace... This requires context. I have to know where did you see that? What was happening at the time? Because uh, it's just a, as it is just a sentence, there's only one meaning, smelling. But if you provide more context, like what was happening in the story, it could mean something else. Celine, hello, welcome back. Good to see you again, Celine. Long time no see. Uh, Gomes, my biggest problem is in pronunciation because I'm still afraid of some words as words with TK. What do you mean TK? Anyway, don't worry about pronunciation. I think Pronunciation is something that most students are, they worry too much. This is something uh, you don't, I think most students, their pronunciation is fine, but they just seem to worry about it because they don't, they don't have an American or British accent. So they think their pronunciation is wrong. You do not need American or British accent to have perfect pronunciation. Your local accent, wherever you come from in the world, you can have your accent and have perfect pronunciation. Stephanie's at Kota Kinabalu. Okay, so I've been there. I didn't see you, but I've been there. Layla, I've already started reading daily. That's great, Layla. Layla, but remember, you got to read for fun. So you got to... Choose stuff that you enjoy reading, and you have to read at your level. Don't read something that's too difficult, okay? Read something that's just a little bit difficult. Vincenzo, where are you from? I'm from Canada. Florin's here. Hello, Florin. And Florin is asking, Robin, did you... Meet someone not being happy when is lucky. Florin, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by your question. Florin, I'm going to give you homework right now. Try to uh, structure your sentence in a different way. Because I would like to answer your question, but I'm not sure the correct meaning So I, I'm guessing when someone was very lucky, they were not happy. Am I right? Vincenzo, but you are English teacher, my friend. I, yes, I'm an English teacher. Well, Florence, uh, not not typing. Type faster. Okay, guys, uh, there, I see there's 20 people watching. If you have any other questions, let me know so I can answer. Uh, as I said, I'm a tool. Use me.
Grace, zip on home. What does that mean? I only know zip up with clothes. Yeah, zip. Zip. I tell my students, zip if they're too loud. Zip on home. A zip. I guess that might be a slang for go quickly. Zip could mean go quickly. All right, uh, Layla, do you call the female who passed the 18th years a woman? And do you call the female who doesn't pass the 18 years a girl? Uh, that's a very uh, difficult question. So by law, technically, uh, around the world, I think the moment a female is 18, excuse me, they are uh, a woman. And then under 18, uh, they, they can still be women, but we might call them, as you put, girls or young women. But, uh, you know, it's not exact rule because, you know, we can say there's a book called Little Women that talks about women under 18 uh, I think, yeah, by law, a woman, a man, uh, they are adults. But in everyday speaking, sometimes, uh, Layla, I don't know your age, but I, I might say, I might call you a girl, okay? So I'm going to guess, Layla, that you're over 18, and I call you a girl, that's not necessarily wrong. Uh, so, yeah, that's a difficult question because sometimes there's no exact rule of when we should call uh, someone a woman or a girl or a man or a boy. But generally, over 18, we call them women, but sometimes they can be girls. And... Under 18, we call girls or young adults, but sometimes they, we, we just call them women too. Uh, I, I know that answer doesn't help too much, but that's the best I can do. Baladjar Kentonis. Hi, sir. Hello, Baladjar. Do you have any English questions? Type it, and I will answer it. Fahim Khan, how to remove hesitation while speaking English? Well, Fahim, first, if, if I was talking to you face to face, the first thing I would say, Fahim, is when you're speaking your, your, uh, your first language, your native language, do you have hesitation? Because sometimes uh, people... Uh, you know, when they're speaking their first language, they have certain problems in the speaking. And when they learn English, they sometimes have this same problem. So maybe that could just be the way you speak in any language. Now, if you're talking about just improving to get faster and faster, speaking is a skill. You have to practice every day. And you can do it, Fahim. If you practice every day, you will get faster. And, uh, uh, you know, every day I talk with students around the world, and they're always asking me for the quick way, the quick and easy way to learn English and improve their English. There is no quick and easy way. It is a difficult task, guys. But with... Uh, effort with time effort and diligence you can master english so just keep practicing subtitled movie clips what is the sound of the schwa in the prefix worry world work is it like the one which is in the word burn or in the the one in which the word apple the schwa is between the second P and L. As I said to Yavier, I am going to talk about the schwa in my Thursday pronunciation video. I will answer any questions about the schwa in the Thursday pronunciation video. Uh, it's difficult to for me to answer uh, 
schwa questions now because I will have to check each word IPA so I don't make a mistake teaching the schwa. Because I, when I'm teaching pronunciation, I usually check uh, English or British and American English, and I usually give the IPA. So, subtitle movie clips. Ask me Thursday. That is a pronunciation video. Celine, what does it mean when someone said, I have butterflies in my stomach? Okay, I have butterflies in my stomach is like an idiom. Now, that, uh, of course, a butterfly is like an insect. Now, when you say, I have butterflies in my stomach, that doesn't mean you have butterflies in your stomach. That just means you're nervous. Okay, so that's an expression a uh, common expression to mean that you're nervous. I have butterflies in my stomach. Vincenzo. Uh, to pronounce the pronounce pronunciation, the English pronunciation, English pronunciation, I'm fixing your question here or your statement. English pronunciation is very difficult when I link a lot of words. Uh, that is actually the best way to learn pronunciation. Now, a lot of uh, people, when they learn how to pronounce words, they look at the individual word. And that is not always the best way to learn how to pronounce that word. The best way to learn pronunciation is to see how that word is pronounced in sentences. Okay, because a single word and that same word in a sentence can sound very different. I can't think of an example right now, but uh, if I do, I'll let you know. So I would say it's very difficult when it's linked with a lot of words, but actually that is a better way to um, learn pronunciation. Florin, can someone be lucky and unhappy? Yeah, Florin. I think uh, that's a good question, and uh, that's not really an English question. That's uh, more about life, and well, that's fine. Uh, can someone be lucky and happy? And I would say, sure, someone, many people are lucky in life, but they're still unhappy. Anfel, what is the difference between adjective and adverb? Well, adjectives usually modify a noun, usually, and adverbs modify the verb, or they, they add to the verb. So adjectives are usually related to the noun, not always, and verbs or adverbs to the verb. Uh, I'm sure you have adjectives and adverbs in your own language. So, uh, ad to understand adjectives and adverbs, the best thing for you to do is go to the dictionary, find what adjective is in your language, find what adverb is in your language, and you can see how it works in your language. Hang Tong, how can I improve? Hang Tong, that was Keith. How can I improve my listening in different accents? Okay, that's a good question. If you guys take uh, any listening tests like TOEIC, because TOEIC listening tests, uh, they usually have multiple accents. You got to listen to different kinds of accents when you're taking the test. Uh, and the best way is practice. Practice listening. Practice listening to different accents. Um, it's hard. It's hard for me. You know, I, when I travel around, it's very hard for me to hear uh, different kinds of accents. Uh, but I practice. I'm pretty good with accents, different accents, but uh, it takes practice. And I usually tell the story uh 
about 20 years ago, I was traveling in Canada, and I come from Western Canada, and I traveled to Eastern Canada, and someone said something to me in English, and I didn't understand. The accent was different. Although we're from the same country, we say, we speak the same language, uh, I was a little bit surprised. Well, I, I could understand the... It was more like a dialect. I could understand the different accent... Uh, you know, after a minute or two, but can be difficult, but takes practice. Layla, I'm 38. Oh, Layla, I didn't know you were, uh, I thought you, Layla, I thought you were like 25. 38, wow. Florin, I have a question, Rob. Florin, you just asked the question. Ratha Valley, how do I get good, how do I memorize vocabulary in English? You should say, how do I memorize vocabulary in English? Uh, my advice is stay away from vocabulary lists. Uh, the best way, again, is reading. Because when you are reading and you see new words, you are seeing those words used in the proper context, the proper situation. When you see the word used in the proper situation, uh, you might not remember the word the first time, but you keep reading. And when you read and read and read, you're going to see that vocabulary again and again. And your, your brain is very smart. It's going to start to remember that word and what kind of situation to use that word. So, again, I would say stay away from vocabulary lists and read. Reading is, without a doubt, the best way to learn vocabulary. Reading a lot. See my end. Oh, my God. I hate age. What do you mean you hate age? You hate my age? Florian, my question is, can I make compound words in English in case of not knowing the right word? Do you have an example, Florian? Uh, my, I'm going to say no. But uh, if you are in an emergency situation and you create your own compound word and the person understands you, that's fine. But for the most part, you cannot invent or create your own compound words. So if you have an example, let me know. And Grace is talking about the schwa. This is the third time about the schwa. Guys, Thursday, I'll talk everything you want to know about the schwa sound in English. Stanley, if someone, a very, very beginner in learning English, what do you prefer to start to learn? Is it a grammatical, basic... Well, very, very beginner is level zero. They know nothing. So I would start with A, B, C and the sounds. So the letters and the sounds, consonants and vowels, I would start with that. Okay. And from that, we would start, I wouldn't start with grammar. I would start with vocabulary, basic vocabulary, man, woman, house, tree. You would start with that. Or that would be after you know the letters. And then from that, we can go into uh, what is a verb. So I would get them to learn verbs. Eat, sit, sleep. And remember that. And then once we have nouns and verbs, we can start uh, sentences. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into grammar at a very, very beginner until they know the letters they know a lot of words, and I guess it depends if they're also if they're adult or a child. If they're a child, you never have to teach grammar, okay? I've taught thousands of kids, and 
English, and I've never, I've never taught them grammar because the children learn the grammar automatically, naturally. So, but an adult uh, usually wants to compare to their own language sometimes, so I might teach them some grammar. But usually I just say, this is a verb, this is a noun, and then start giving example sentences. And for basic stuff, most people can understand. If you're going into advanced grammar, uh, a lot of people study advanced grammar. They're not ready to study advanced grammar. But uh, I guess tenses would be important. Uh, present tense, past tense, future tense. I might like teach the basics of grammar. Like if I was doing a lesson on the uh, past tense and I had one hour, I would probably spend five minutes on the grammar part and then the rest of the time making sentences and practicing sentences and not worrying about the grammar part of it. Uh, another teacher would give their own opinion or strategy. Hope that helps, uh, Stanley. Fahim, thanks. Raquel, how, sir, how can I connect the words in Ingles? You're talking about English? You're talking about linking words? I'm not sure your question, Raquel. Can you ask it again with an example? Layla, could you pronounce this sentence, please? The first of Earth's new rulers the first of earths yeah i think your problem is right there earths <laughs> words like let me erase These words, you're, you're probably, all of you have difficulty with, I know. Because we have a TH with an S, TH with an S, TH with an S. And these can be, ve this is very difficult for uh, students learning English, this pronunciation of THS. But I, I'm going to say it. Earths, clothes, months months uh, it's difficult it takes uh, a long time to master that sound uh, again with pronunciation it's a skill but it's also uh, connected to your listening so if you cannot hear hear the sound correctly then you you should practice your listening more of these sounds because when you hear the sounds you, you're, you, you have a better chance of making those sounds. So I'll say it again. Earths, clothes, months. Hope that helps. The first of Earths' new rulers. Flora and Toic listening practice. The, is it a good idea for improving listening skills? Absolutely not, Florin. Stay away from any test preparation. Florin, you want authentic English, real English, which means you should be listening to uh, radio or websites uh, using English, uh, as I said, Voice of America here. I usually recommend Voice of America Learning English. I'll put a... This is authentic English. This You could choose your level in Voice of America, but you are learning new stories. This is authentic English. TOEIC listening is artificial English. It's not real. You're wasting your time. Unless you need to take the TOEIC test, but no. I would say no. For anyone, IELTS, TOEFL, TOEIC, any test prep, the best thing for you to do is authentic English, 
real English listening, not fake English. Esso, hi from Brazil. Hello, Esso. Kanji, uh, hi, Robin. Esso and Kanji, do you guys have any English questions? Ask me. Stephanie, between reading a book and watching a movie, listening to a song, which can help us to improving our English language? Okay, Stephanie, good question. And the best thing is what you enjoy. Which one of those do you enjoy most? Now, I'm going to recommend read a book. I'm going to say that's the best way. But you, you might hate reading. So you buy a book and you read a page and you read another and then you give, it, give up. Okay, I don't want you to do that. But it, maybe you, you, lo, you watch a movie and you keep watching movies so I, or listening to songs. I want you to do what you enjoy the most, okay? And I know most of you hate reading, but if you hate reading, then at least watch movies, listen to music. Do something. Do what you enjoy and do it a lot. But I, I hope you learn to love reading. Carrie, it's very hard to learn English, but I don't want to give up any advices. Well, the first thing I'm going to teach is your question. You made a mistake. And I'm picking on Carrie because it's a common mistake. Oops. She wrote advices, which is, uh, a, this is not a countable noun. Uh, it is an uncountable a noun, so you should say any advice. And so I would say to Carrie, uh, it's very hard to learn English, but I don't want to give up. I would say it's not very hard. It's time consuming. It takes a lot of time, effort, and diligence. So if you feel it is hard to learn English, all of you. If you feel, oh, English is hard, you're probably not studying at your level. You're studying something that is hard. If you are at your level, then English should be, you, you have a feeling that it's a little bit too easy or a little bit challenging, okay? So if, you, if you're feeling English is hard, whatever you're studying is probably not your level. Reduce, get, get it, if you're reading, get an easier book. If you're listening to CNN, stop listening to CN, CNN. Listen to a song or listen to a, a, a short YouTube video, okay? Grace, but Robin, you have flashcards. Isn't a vocabulary list? Yeah, I talked about flashcards before. I still have them. My Korean flashcards. Because I'm making vocabulary flashcards when I read. Not all vocabulary I try to guess and skip, but some vocabularies I really want. I use dictionary. Okay, so Grace... Thank you for following my advice on reading. You are a great student. You're trying to improve your English. And I promise you, you will get better over time. So good for you on reading. Uh, and with reading, it takes quantity. So remember, you don't want to read too difficult. You want to read a lot of stuff so you can learn the vocabulary. Now you're making flashcards. That's good. And it helps you to remember. But, you know, I originally made these flashcards to remember a lot of vocabulary. Uh, I'm sorry, Grace. Not because I wanted to speak Korean. This was not for me to improve my Korean speaking. This was actually to help me improve to take a Korean test. Because uh, I have a... A resident visa in Korea, I had to take a Korean test. The Korean test uh, was only listening and reading. It did not have a speaking part. It did not have a writing part. So when I studied Korean, I studied a lot of vocabulary 
uh, before the test or, you know, about six months before the test, I just studied thousands and thousands of words. I took the test. I passed the test. But, you know, I was thinking uh, a few days ago, how much of that vocabulary do I remember? I've studied thousands of Korean words, but uh, I didn't. I don't remember them because you know I didn't really learn them in the proper context. If I sincerely wanted to start learning any language, Korean or maybe Spanish, what I would do is I would find children's books and start reading at my level, and I would keep reading and reading and reading in write from children's books as much as I can and slowly build up my vocabulary and how to use that vocabulary. So uh, I would do that. And yeah, I might keep some flashcards, but I, I, would, I would alter how I studied the language. Flashcards, you know, vocabulary lists, yeah, if you have an English test, these are great. But for keeping that vocabulary and using that, not so much. But it's better than nothing. Better than nothing. Florin, I don't know what you're talking about. German flying thing for airplane. Fire thing for lighter. Oh, your compound words. Sorry, I'm about, oh, I'm, I'm late on answering the questions. Flying thing for airplane. Yeah, that that is great in emergency situations. If you cannot remember airplane, flying thing is beautiful. It's better than nothing. And fire thing. Oh, the fire thing. Perfect. If you cannot remember lighter. But you cannot create words in English. All right. Those are okay for emergency situations, but... If you know airplane, you cannot say flying thing. If you know lighter, you cannot say uh, fire thing. And so how about WhatsApp group for beginners like me? Well, I have check in the links below. I have many WhatsApp groups. Join it, Esso. Join the WhatsApp groups. <laughs> Florin, hand shoe for glove. Uh, yeah, that is cute, but you cannot do that. Only in emergency. Seema, I hate that we grow up. I like it. I like getting older. Trunksu. Are you sub to PewDiePie? Of course I'm sub to PewDiePie. PewDiePie is uh, my favorite YouTuber. I don't watch every video, but every once every three days I watch his video. So Trunksu... Heng Tong, probably I need to listen to all voice notes in WhatsApp group. I don't listen to all voice notes in WhatsApp group, and they're my groups. Uh, when I first made my WhatsApp groups, I used to listen to every voice note, but my WhatsApp groups grew so so large that people were sending you know hours of uh, voice notes a day. I couldn't keep up. So Heng Tong, if you chat with someone directly it's good to practice with voice, voice notes, but you don't have to listen to them all. Seema, plus I'm a girl forever. Well, girls, yeah, you're a girl forever. Mark, Marak, Marak. Hi, teacher. Hello, Marak, Marak. Do you have any English questions? Florian, does a sentence in English change the meaning depending on the, se the situation? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sentences can change. You can be, a sentence can change to sarcasm or the word emphasis in the sentence can change depending on the situation. Like that. Sorry, just had to check something. Uh, 
Oh, Florin, what is the, what are you asking? What is the difference between open and closed compounds? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I think you know, open means two words. And closed means it's one word. I'm not sure exactly, Florin. Like a good example uh, would be greenhouse. Greenhouse can be an open and closed compound. Greenhouse gas or greenhouse gases would be a closed and a greenhouse as a building, I think, is an open compound. I'm not sure exactly, Florin. Leila, you were surprised when you knew about my age. It is too late to learn English language for me. I'm sorry. It is not too late, Leila. And already your English is pretty high level. Susanna. Hi, Robin. I'm working now when I'm listening to your lessons. What, are you, what kind of job are you doing now, Susanna? I hate reading. Florence says, I hate reading, but there are exceptions for that. Yeah, it's for all of you. It's very important not to read stuff you hate. You got to find stuff you enjoy reading. If it is celebrity, famous people gossip, read that. If it's sports news, read that. You got to find something you're interested in. That's how it works. Yep, Florin, pieces of advice. Arash giving good advice to Layla. Florin, every language is time consuming, but I'm not sure of learning Esperanto. Uh, Esperanto is the international language. Uh, I looked at that once, Florin, and I didn't, you know, it's a good idea in theory, but just, it's not many, not enough people are learning it for it to be a practical language. You know, it looks like a hobby language, not really a practical language. Grace, what level are usually your students well, at the university, they are very low level, uh, but of course, most of my, I have international students. I have students around the world every day. I'm teaching all levels, all ages. My youngest student is four years old, and my oldest student is 66 years old. Flora and I learn German via flashcards. Yeah, if that works for you. If, flash, if flashcards are an effective way for you to learn, keep doing it. But reading is better than flashcards. And the Memorize app, that's pretty good too. I, uh, Florin, I, I saw your video. I think you were using the Memorize app. I took a look at that today. I think you posted a five-minute video in the WhatsApp group. I didn't watch all five minutes, but I, I watched about a minute, and it looked yeah. That, and then I made the comment: "You're gonna, you're learning Korean more than me, Florin." Nafas Persian. Hi everyone. Hello, Nafas. Do you have any English questions? Thanthanui, please explain the difference uh, the difference between advice, advise, and suggest. So I, th you don't want to confuse advice. You don't want to confuse these two words because advice is a noun and we have a verb to advise. So advise as the verb. Oh, I spelled verb wrong. Verb is similar to suggest. Another verb. So advise and suggest. And they're very similar. Uh, I advise you to study English every day. 
I suggest to you to study English every day. Okay, they're very similar. Arash wants to learn Korean. Uh, Arash, you need to join. Did you join the Korean WhatsApp group? Foreigners in the second month of learning Korean. So many people are interested in Korean language, except me. Sorry, Grace. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you, Robin. I will try to love reading a book and make reading as my hobby. Stephanie, you don't have to read a book. You can read, well, as I said, comic books, or you can read tweets, Twitter, Instagram. You're reading stuff in English. Uh, you can read articles. Any, you can read anything. Just you're reading and you're doing it every day. Old is gold. Thank you, Prakar. Words of wisdom. All right, Florin knows the difference between advice and advice. Okay, you guys are you already you already said that before I did. I'm I'm late. Layla, is this sentence correct or not? It's a painful truth. Uh, it, that could be that could be a correct sentence, Layla. I don't know where you saw that, but that could be correct. Uh, Prakar, Robin, your Twitter link, please. Hey guys, this is next to my head, like all for an hour. You can see my Twitter <laughs> there. Florin, I want to be intermediate in Korean language. Wow, Florin, you have uh, big goals. All right, we're over an hour. If anyone has any last questions, now is the time. Get in any last questions. We're going to finish up uh, soon. Uh, Florin, what is Line from the link list? Line is another chatting app. Line is very popular in South Japan and Southeast Asia. You know, every region of the world uses a kind of different chatting app. Most of the world uses WhatsApp. Korea uses Kako Talk. And Southeast Asia, uh, Japan uses Line for chatting. Sima, LOL. Layla, thank you. As I said, for Layla, I say... Every day of my life, I have to say thank you to Layla. She's always so kind and nice to me. As I said, I think she's my fan club president. Thank you very much, Layla. Uh, I always appreciate Layla's help or uh, support. Grace, why doesn't you? Where's your question mark, Grace? Is that a question? Because if there's no question mark, I'm confused. Why doesn't advice advise need to after and suggest need to after it? I don't know what you mean. Can you have some example sentences, Grace? Arash, explain things versus stuff. Well. Oh, Grace deleted her question. Grace, you can do better. Make a better question. Arash. Things and stuff. A lot of native speakers are going to use things and stuff. These are lazy speakers and writers. I do it too. Uh, when we're lazy, we just say things. There's many things on my desk. Things and stuff are synonyms. They mean the same thing. There's a lot of stuff on my desk. There are many things on my desk. So a rash, they mean the same thing. Some people will say things. Some people will say stuff. And both of those mean 
kind of a random collection of items. There are a lot of things in my room. There's a lot of stuff in my room. Seema, do you understand life, teacher? I think I understand life. Anagui, it's the first time here, thanks. Do you have any question, Anagui? And welcome. Be sure to subscribe. Prakar, goodbye. See you uh, in the future. And Raquel, thanks so much. It's very important. This. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, let's look at our schedule. Same time every day. Tomorrow is IELTS TOEFL. Wait one moment, Grace. I'll get to your question. Thursday, pronunciation. Topic is schwa. All of you are very curious about the schwa, and it's very important to English. So I'll talk about the schwa sound on Thursday, Friday, topic, Saturday, game. So make sure, I don't expect you guys to watch every video, although some of you are, but try to visit from time to time to improve your English. All right. Uh, I'll get to Grace's question, the last question. When you explain between advice and suggest, I want to, I advise you, I suggest to you, I want to know too. Uh, advi uh, okay, Grace. I advise, I advise you, if I make a sentence, you didn't make example sentence. You just have the beginning of a sentence, Grace. I advise you, I advise you and suggest to you so right there uh yeah you already know you said i want to know too well that's how we use it i advise you to study i suggest to you to study okay so that's how you use them that too is follows suggest okay goodbye and Florin has a letter for Schwa. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I'm going to end it here. If you are new, welcome. And please subscribe and come visit again. If you are the loyal students who always visit, thank you guys very much. Uh, I always appreciate your support. Uh, usually after my live streams, I go into the WhatsApp groups. That's the best way to talk to me. Join my WhatsApp groups below. All right, guys. Uh, have a good day or good night wherever you are.